Hello guys, a very good evening to all of you. I'm Dr. Ramchand, your pharmacology faculty, and it's an absolute, absolute privilege, guys, to talk to Dr. Aditya, who has got an amazing rank of rank six in the recently concluded INI set November 2023. So first of all, uh, Aditya, many congratulations to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. So basically, I'll not ask uh, the cliche question uh, is uh, how do you feel because everyone knows how one one will feel if he or she gets a rank six. What I'll ask you is, did you feel better than what you thought of yourself, or yes. how was it, yes, or did definitely. you know that? Definitely, I was actually. Um, I did. I knew that I did well in the exam, but rank six was not something that I expected. Like, so what, what? So what did you think? What What was the rank uh, you thought that you could get? Mostly in the top 30, 40, something around that. Okay. Anyways, now coming to the important part, I just want to ask you this. Uh, what, what is your primary source of preparation? Primary source was marrow. All right. So when did you start using marrow as a primary source? Uh, actually speaking, I started using marrow as a resource from second year, uh, second year end onwards. But uh, mm -hmm. at that point of time, I was not using it as a resource for PG preparation. I was just uh, using it uh, for my props, like whatever subjects I was not really keen on reading from the textbooks. Uh, those subjects I used to read the marrow notes. And for subjects mm -hmm. like uh, pharma also, I used to watch the videos uh, because there are certain topics which are difficult to directly read it from the book. So for uh, those topics, I used to watch the videos. Otherwise, I used to read the notes just before the prof exam so that it can be a good revision. Like once you're done with the textbooks, it can become a really good revision source. And uh, in second year, I think uh, I personally really like pharmacology. I'm not saying that because you are here, but in pharma, I, I was yeah. really happy with the extra edge content, which was there, like the newer drugs or the monoclonal antibodies or stuff like that. And uh, third year, I think I use DNT, um, especially the whole thing. I have done it only from marrow because it's very conceptual. And uh, for the prof exams, you need that amount of depth. Um, so, marrow initial part, I was using marrow more of uh, a resource for prof exams. But in the middle, I used to write GTs off, off and, uh, you know, like once or twice a month, I used to give GTs even in my final year also. But, okay, uh, after in yeah. but after internship started, I could not use marrow because it was really hectic. There was no time to spare at all. Like, Mm. Absolutely no time, so I did not uh, use marrow in my internship. After internship, um, I had used uh, again for uh, revision and. Uh, okay, so just tell me one thing. I would like to ask you: the reason you used uh, marrow videos for your prof uh, preparation subjects, like second year, third year onwards, now that helped you obviously to clear the prof exams. And uh, did that uh, kind of help you to prepare for the exam, not directly but indirectly? So that, I mean, yes. you could in internship revise those subjects easily because you had done them, you know, in the pro, uh, second year or third year. Yeah. Uh, to take an example, uh, yes. I actually never used to skip any topic, like, uh, especially for the second year subjects, I did not skip any of them because I like the subjects. Many of them don't like pharma. Many of them don't like patho and all. I actually love patho and pharma. They are okay. my favorite subjects. Path and pharma are my mm. favorite subjects. So I okay. actually read them in great depth. And that helped a lot in INSS. Yeah, because if you combine path and pharma, it becomes medicine, isn't it? That's one way to look at it. That okay, so uh, yeah, so just tell me, just for the the students who are uh, your juniors who are watching you, so they can learn from you, uh, they can get inspired from you. That uh, whenever you used to watch videos, I mean, uh, how would you do? For for example, you started from second year, right? So yeah. would you go and watch a video? you know, topic wise and then finish those videos or would you follow the schedule in your medical college and whatever topic is given in the tutorials, you do that. What was what your way of doing the videos? Actually, second year was one year in which I read textbook mm -hmm. for every subject. That is probably mm -hmm. the only year I read textbook for every single subject. Like pharmacology, I read Katsang and also I read Goodman also to an extent. And uh, <laughs> Goodman was really, Goodman was really helpful for me to, you know, know all the rarer points in pharmacology. Because I used to mm -hmm. attend a lot of quizzes also, so uh, okay. that helped. I didn't go through the full good man, just few topics which are very important for the exam. Those topics. Okay. And, and uh, what? Yeah. Once I read that, I used to go to the videos and see if there's any uh, point that I've missed out. Uh, and mm. uh, if there's any update or new drug or new mechanism or whatever, like uh, 
which might be there in the notes i used to just mm-hmm. learn it or add it into some resource where i can revise it okay so how how do you use the videos did you used to write your own notes or you use the mero printed one notes for some subjects i made my own notes for pharmacology pathology and all i made my own notes um for okay. the third year subjects i did not make my own notes because i not like the third year subjects so i used the mero notes for third year subjects and uh, i think for any exam for any entrance exam the best and the most important subject is second year people uh, who realize this they clear the exam that that is the uh, core yeah so how strong the house is depends upon how strong the foundation is basically yes. what you're saying yes i got that okay so we talked about one pillar of any preparation and that is uh, the lectures textbooks videos notes etc the second pillar of uh, any competitive exam is uh, to solve as many questions as possible so q bank so how bullish were you with the q bank how much you loved the q bank how much you like to solve mcqs from the q bank um i have uh, done a lot of modules i have not done the end of the but i did a lot of the modules and uh, mm-hmm. the most important part of the q bank was the explanation because the quality of questions is really good that everyone knows but the explanations mm-hmm. is what actually is important because we can solve 10 questions 20 questions 30 questions but if you solve mm-hmm. two questions and you get the explanation that is needed to solve 30 questions that saves your time and uh, that was something i really liked in the mara okay so uh just tell me one thing how would you do the q bank where are you a random kind of guy like you would challenge yourself pick up any subject any topic and do the q bank or revise the notes or anything before of particular topic let us say cardiovascular system you would revise the notes or was the videos then do the q bank or what was your strategy of solving the questions in q bank actually q bank um, i uh, solved it in a different way when i was doing the initial part of the q bank in my prof years i used to solve it topic wise but in the uh, last four months when i was preparing for the exam in a dedicated manner last four months um, mm-hmm. i did only the important topics i did not do the whole q bank because i did not have that much time so i did only okay. the previous year topics important topics like you know mm-hmm. from these topics the questions will definitely come like general pharmacology or something yeah, yeah. like uh, cardiovascular also something very specific like um, mm-hmm. what are the new drugs or something like that not the whole yeah. thing okay so uh, now tell me one thing see whenever you solve the q bank right uh, there are some mcqs every student uh, he, we cannot solve some mcqs so did you use that bookmark feature present in the mero q bank yes i used the bookmark feature um, uh, to highlight all the questions that are really difficult or volatile like the question mm. may not be wo- difficult it may be even volatile so i used to put a different color for that i think i put the yellow color question mark for those kind of questions and the mm-hmm. red color star for the tougher questions so i used to <laughs> segregate them and okay. uh, the last moment is both okay good great 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 now tell me one thing uh, there is an amazing feature called as custom module in mero app and i wish i had that when i was a student because we had nothing like uh, you know there was no technology and cluster module there could be a lot of different uses i just want to know your perspective did you find any kind of uh, you know use for the cluster modules that could you know fill those gaps in your uh, preparation uh, the cluster modules i think um, you know you can simulate a mini exam with the cluster module you can mm-hmm. select any number of questions up to 100 questions and then keep an mm-hmm. exam with that amount of questions um, so that uh, was kind of helpful when you don't have the concentration to give a whole grand test but you want to write an exam kind of feel that will help okay okay now we talked about two pillars now let us come down to the third pillar and the third and one of the single most important deciding factor is actually how many grand tests you give because that is the real battlefield and tell me you you already said me that uh, said to me that you started giving grand tests uh, towards the end of your final year right yeah so uh, tell me um that uh, whenever you would attempt a grand test right what was your strategy of giving a grand test i mean how many grand tests did you take to be comfortable solving you know 200 questions at one go was it from the very first grand test or it took you two to three grand tests 
um i don't remember exactly but uh, i think i was actually at that point of time i think there were 300 question grants when i was in final year their pattern hadn't changed so there were okay. probably 300 question grants or something like that i was not having any issues with time management from the initial mm-hmm. period itself even mm-hmm. when i had not done all the 19 subjects time management was never an issue it was more about the content completion which was an issue for me so okay. even in the initial period of time i used to get decent scores in the grant test right when i started off itself for um, I was getting 98 percentile and all that in the grant test. So okay, from the beginning. Yeah. So the thing was the completion of the content, and that I think you become more serious only when the exam comes closer. So when the NEET PG 2023 came closer, I I revised all the PSM topic and mm-hmm. uh, all the uh, irritating stuff which you forget, all the musty shows and all that. I which I used to always avoid. So those yeah, kind of yeah. things I revised it only closer to the exam. So grant test. First day, I did not have issues with the grant test, like okay. time management or something. So, how many grant tests would you give usually? In final year, I used to give like one. I used to give very random. I used to give one per month, or you know, sometimes two, three also. I used to give, but mm-hmm. uh, at that point of time, I had not finished all the subjects. But I used to just give it for the feel of having, you know, tests. Like they, they were, uh, yeah, because in my internship, I was very sure there was no time to do anything, so I can't give any grant test and all in my internship. So. It was absolutely one year, just nothing, no preparation, nothing cut out. So after that only it started. So uh, I tried to give it more in final year, and that also helped because in my NEET also my rank was 530 in the uh, okay. NEET 534. So mm-hmm. that rank I can attribute it to my uh, uh, studies that I did in final year because internship so no time at all. So, yeah, everything everything has a role in your final rank as it is. Now tell me one of the important uh, important you know problem we have whenever we prepare for an exam is uh, we have to complete the course and we didn't we have to give grant tests and then we have to review the grant tests. Now did you yes. review the com- all the questions in the grant tests or only those one which you did wrong or what what what, what was your strategy to review a grant test? In the initial period, I used to review all the questions, including the correct questions. But uh, in my core preparation, last four months, I did not get the time to review all the questions. So I used to review the incorrect yeah. questions and the questions I've guessed, because okay. I feel that your guesses may not always go in your favor. And uh, mm-hmm. even uh, in the real exam, if you're really lucky, you might go correct in the guesses. But you never know whether your luck is there or not. Like, for example, I did mess up a bit in the real exam. So you have to always keep. you know a buffer for the guest question and whichever question you are guessing again and again in the gts you should read that topic closer to the exam like there are some topics where you keep on guessing irrespective of reading mm-hmm. it those topics you have to read it separately note it down in you know a notebook or some somewhere you just have a note of it and uh, review it closer to the gts i mean closer to the real exam okay and tell me there is an another good feature in maro app there is gt analytics Where you can find out which subjects you are a little bit weaker in. So, did you use the GT analytics to improvise on those weaker subjects? Yes, uh, I had used uh, GT analytics, especially in the initial phase when I was starting out. Um, mm. My bottom three subjects, I used to see what the bottom three subjects were, and uh, I used to go through those subjects again during the revision phase. And mm-hmm. I was very helpful because. like my bottom three always used to be spm and uh, maybe one of the short subjects which i have never read or it used to be anat so mm-hmm. during the real exam closer to the exam i made sure that these subjects are good enough to get me a decent so guys uh, he's pointing out a very good uh, you know point here that, and this is a doubt i get a lot of times so i'm giving grantus but my score is not improving then ask them do you ever look at the gt analytics and they say no so i ask them look at the gt analytics Work on the bottom three subjects regularly, frequently, and you'll get there. Okay, Aditya, now tell me, uh, there is a feature called a schema in Mero app. Do, do, do you yeah. know about that? Yeah, I so had used me. it a lot. I had used it a lot okay. because so uh, I'd love the, to know how how did you use it? In the last four months, it's very very mm-hmm. difficult to go through all ninety subjects, videos, notes, uh, yeah. question bank, previous year questions, previous year topics. It's really too much. So schema is something that has simplified all this. I mean, I personally feel that I did not use it very much. I mean, I could have still used it more. But if mm-hmm. you really want to, you know, start using it, I think 
you can start using it especially when you are starting core preparation you, you just want to focus on the important topics from which you should never get a question wrong those kind of questions, topics excellent so uh, now tell me one thing no matter whatever be the competitive exam we prepare for the you know important deciding part is that last part that is we call as revision right where we try to consolidate all the 90 subjects so what was your basic thought process behind planning of revision how did you plan it um i planned actually i planned to do three revisions but i could not do three revisions i did only two revisions um okay. uh, my first revision was for around 15 20 days but in the second revision i had only 8 to 9 days so on the okay. second revision um, i focused on the most high yield subject like the uh, obj is very high yield and it was actually mm-hmm. very difficult in this exam very very difficult in finance mm-hmm. so obj is something that you should really focus on and uh, i actually revised only the very important subjects like obj is one of them and uh, mm. then fm is very very important and uh, mm. i did only that i couldn't do the whole main videos and all i did not have the time so i did only that and that was really enough for the exam definitely revise obg by surgery psm pharma cardiac these five subjects mm. you have to revise uh, other subjects if you can revise you do revise of course you will have a small notebook or the 20th notebook or shorty copy whatever notebook where you will have all the volatile stuff so i had a very big notebook actually not a small notebook but very big and uh, it had all the volatile topics i actually couldn't revise the whole notebook so i was having the fear whether uh, uh, you know of not able to go through the whole notebook is it going to cost me a rank or something but uh, it's not if you yeah. have, if you have made such a notebook itself you will definitely uh, get a good rank no doubt about it yeah i got your point i got your point okay so aditya are you a runner did you run in the marathons uh marathon no sir i did not uh, i could not attend it because i was following a different schedule and uh, solving five or 10 cube banks modules at that point of time i could not do it so i did not attend it and how close was your uh, ini set rank how close is your ini set rank to your rank in the maro gts actually maro your... gts overall yeah it is quite similar I mean, it's slightly better actually. I should say because I was expecting around thirty something like that because Maro usually be around thirty forty something like that. Okay. And, uh, I think okay. something that less than that. Okay. So, Aditya, what awaits you in future? What do you want to become? You can you can you can be anything with this rank. So, what would you choose? Most likely, I will be choosing general. Okay. So, Aditya, before we. put the screens on tell us a little bit about your hobbies and uh, what, what what do you like to do in your leisure time apart from medicine um i actually like to listen to songs i listen to different uh, languages you know not just one or two languages many uh, indian languages and other languages also and uh, also i like reading books fiction and non fiction both especially mythology mm-hmm. different again different cultures and different Okay, and which is which? Which one is your most favorite book of all? If you, I mean, I know it's a difficult question. Yeah. Single out one book. I think <laughs> the most intriguing book, I should say, not I. Sh- I can't call it the most favorite or something, yeah. but definitely the most intriguing book. Like every time you read it, it gives a different dimension. Mahabharat, because I've read it twice or thrice, and even if I read it again, it will give some other dimension of thought. Really, as they say, Listen, what you can't find in Mahabharat, you can't find in anywhere else. So. That's an interesting choice. And in which language do you read Mahabharat? In which language? In Tamil, in uh, English, which language? I read it in English because the most fluent in English. Okay, amazing, amazing. Adi, it was amazing to talk to you and to get into the deeper roots of your preparation, how it was anchored, so that a lot of students can get idea about their preparation. Before uh, we can uh, wrap it up, I, I would just like to uh, wo- warn the students that guys. you watch interviews of lots of toppers right but do not copy them directly right get inspired from them see inspire get, getting inspired from someone and copying someone there is a very thin line of difference right so we all are different as human beings and we need to have our own plans and definitely definitely we can learn a lot from toppers and make a plan of our own so aditya thanks a lot for your time you. and uh, happy diwali to you and your family and happy diwali to all the students who are watching this uh, video and uh, aditya do know this that i am and the entire mero team is extremely extremely proud of you 
and our blessings will always be with you no matter where you go what you do in your life and we will always cherish your uh, prosperous career as if thank you. you are someone from our own family so lots of love thank and you. blessings thank you very much nice talking to you thank you